your society teaches you to be blind because the society needs blind people they are good slaves because they are always dependent on the leaders politicians pandits priests they are very convenient people they never create any tr trouble they are never rebels they are obedient always ready to submit to any kind of nonsense to any stupid politician to any stupid priest and in fact who else wants to be a politician except stupid people and who wants to be a priest except stupid people these are the dimensions for the mediocre for the inferior those who are suffering from inferiority complex they become politicians just to prove that they are not inferior to the world and to themselves the society the establishment wants you to be blind from the very beginning it teaches every child that you are blind it conditions every child that you are blind your whole educational system is nothing but a conspiracy against every child to keep you blind it does not teach you meditation because meditation is the art of opening your eyes when somebody arrives to awareness he naturally feels great compassion he sees all around people who have eyes who have inbuilt capacities to see the truth who are from their very birth capable of becoming buddhas enlightened ones awakened ones are suffering and the whole suffering is ridiculous it need not be so compassion happens and compassion starts communicating but communication is difficult impossible buddha speaks from the hill top and you live in the dark valleys where light never reaches he talks in words of light by the time they reach to you their meaning changes by the time your mind catches hold of them it colors them into its own color it is not only so about buddhas even ordinary communication seems to be impossible the husband cannot communicate with his wife the parents cannot communicate with their children the teachers cannot communicate with their students what to say about buddhas people who exist on the same level even they cannot communicate because words are tricky things you say one thing but the moment it reaches to the other person now it is in his power how to interpret it the queen was traveling in england's back country when she saw a man his wife and a flock of children impressed the queen asked are all of these your children yes your highness answered the man how many children do you have asked the english sovereign 16 was the reply 16 children repeated her highness we would we should give you a knighthood he has one piped up the lady but he won't wear it or if you have missed another story for you <laughs> thor the germanic god of thunder was feeling restless so he decided to have a week 
and fling. Taking a handful of jewels from the Valhalla Petty, petty Cash Department, he slipped down to earth, got himself an elegant disco suit and a few gold chains and began hitting the Saturday night dance bars. After a big night on the town, he finally took home the most beautiful woman he had seen and he spent the rest of the night and morning satisfying his heroic libido. When he got out of bed and began dressing, he realized that the exhausted girl on the bed lacked his godly sexual stamina. By way of explanation, he leaned down over her and whispered, Honey, I think you should know I am Thor. Wide-eyed, the girl explained, Thor, you big thun of a bitch, I can't even thatend up. The ordinary communication, <laughs> the very mundane communication, even in the marketplace is difficult. And a Buddha wants to commune you something which he has found in a state of no mind, which he has found when all thoughts disappear, which he has found when he, even he himself is no more, when the ego evaporates, when there is utter silence, absolute peace, the sky is without clouds. Now how to bring this infinite experience into words. No word is adequate enough, hence the misunderstanding. Yes, Madira, it is absolutely inevitable that a Buddha will always be misunderstood. Only those few people can understand a Buddha who are disciples and devotees. By being a disciple is means one who has put aside all his prejudices, one who has put aside all his thoughts and is ready to listen, not to his own mind and his mind's interpretations, but to the words of Buddha, who is not in a state of argument with the Buddha, who is not inside thinking what Buddha is saying, who listens a Buddha as you listen to classical music, who listens to a Buddha as you listen to the sound of running water, who listens to Buddha as you listen to the wind passing through the pine trees, or the cuckoo calling from the distance. That is the state of disciple. Or, if you rise a little higher and become a devotee. Devotee is one who has not only dropped his mind, but has brought his heart in, who listens from the heart, not from logic, but from love. The disciple is on the way of being a devotee. The disciple is the beginning of being a devotee, and the devotee is the fulfillment of being a disciple. Only these few people understand a Buddha, and in Understanding a Buddha, they are transformed, transported into another world, the world of liberation, nirvana, light, love, benediction. <laughs>